readers. It feels like this work you're doing, investigating and mapping power, gives you so many new ways to think about how characters in your novels behave and how you behave as well. You're seeing more in your novels, all sorts of subtle interactions that other readers might miss. I want to connect the work today to some of the thinking that you did in the first bend of this unit, where you thought about how your reading is shaped in part by your identities. There is one huge part of our identities that ends up shaping behaviors, and that is gender. There are entire fields of study around gender, and the thinking around gender has changed enormously over the last 50 years. It used to be that most people thought about gender the way a lot of people once thought about race, as something fixed and easily known with clear societal rules around it. But now you'll find people in different corners of the world who are much more fluid in their thinking about things like race and gender. And the truth is that makes some people nervous because people get used to thinking that boys should act a certain way and girls should act in certain ways. But young people are leading the way in acknowledging that gender is more complex than that, that some people do not identify as one gender, gender and others identify as gender fluid. Today I want to teach you that as kids grow up, they perceive rules or codes of behavior associated with what has been termed being a boy or being a girl. Critical readers are alert to the power exerted by this hidden curriculum. They explore it and may even choose to resist it. It's going to be important to consider the oppressive force of gender norms, rules, and codes for all identities. For those who identify as male, female, transgender, gender fluid, gender neutral, or other ways of identifying. We're going to begin this kind of critical reading by thinking about masculinities and how norms related to masculinity can be learned and taught and enforced. There is a very famous gender researcher in this field whose name is William Pinar. Pinar suggests that boys are taught to be at war with each other. He doesn't mean war as in learning to use weapons, though that would also be interesting to think about. He means that boys are taught to be tough and rough with each other in every way, so that even their options for showing affection can end up being a range of roughhousing. Let's practice reading with Pinar's theory as a critical lens for interpretation. As you watch the characters in this story, will you think about these questions? What gender norms or behaviors do these characters display? And how do characters teach, learn, or enforce these codes here? It's going to be subtle. You might not even notice it. Oh, and you'll see a Coca-Cola bottle as a focus, as this story was made as a commercial. Let that go for now. Although it's significant that this narrative was shown literally to millions of consumers. Go back to the lesson platform and watch the video Coca-Cola Brotherly Love. It's a short video, so read through these questions again that you'll want to be thinking about as you watch the video. All right, readers, I want you to pause and think about um, what you noticed in the video and jot some notes in your reading notebook. What kinds of gender norms or behaviors did you notice? How are these boys teaching or learning or enforcing certain codes or kinds of behaviors? Readers, you are becoming so alert to subtleties. You probably notice the very small details like how the older brother 
puts things on a top shelf so his younger brother can't get them or how he doesn't seem to even notice that his younger brother is walking in the rain behind him. Or you might have thought about how the older brother intimidates the bullies just with a stare, though he backs it up with his height and his build, all of which give him power. All of these actions have to do with exerting power. Listen, readers, this is complicated. It would be easy to simply say, this is bad. The bigger boy does nothing but tease and intimidate all day long, and the younger, smaller boy is completely powerless. But this ad won awards and was translated into multiple languages and was shown all around the world. Clearly, a lot of viewers thought, this is great. The older boy takes care of his younger brother, and in the end, boys will be, will be boys. It's all good. Here's a tip then. Often, a text can be perceived as both beautiful and disturbing. It will be its initial beauty that gives it power, and it can be the underlying disturbing message that can make it damaging. I want you to go back and watch the video one more time. This time, I want you to think about what parts of the video could be perceived as beautiful and what parts seem disturbing. Go ahead and pause this video and go back to the lesson platform to watch the commercial one more time. It is both, isn't it? The music is gorgeous, sort of anthem-like and stirring. Some people might think the brothers are beautiful, too. They have this close relationship. And when the younger brother is afraid, he seems somewhat thrilled that his older brother shows up. You can imagine that the older boy is fond and protective of his younger brother, like he's the only one who is allowed to tease him. And yet there is also something disturbing about how the older brother can't show his fondness by being kind. Why can't he give his brother the headphones? Why does he have to tease him all the time? What if he actually sat down with him? Could he show his brother a different way to be a boy? Readers, we've been studying masculinities here. You'll notice other ways that gender norms are learned and taught as you look at other texts. For instance, just for a second, look at these images of Disney heroines. What gender norms are being taught here? Readers, you're probably noticing that the biggest thing that is being taught here is a certain body image. Girls or young people who identify as female are being taught that to be a heroine, to be brave and significant, you also have to look like a Barbie doll with a tiny waist, long hair, and pale skin. So the norms being taught are different. But once again, there are oppressive gender norms being taught and absorbed in a way that will be hard to resist. Readers, it's fascinating to think about the power exerted by gender norms, how kids learn the rules or codes that are taught inside of certain groups and communities. Clearly, these aren't always about boys, nor will these codes always be the same. They'll be shaped by culture and context. So rather than go on with this one story for the rest of a read aloud, you will have your choice of videos to study. Here's what the rest of our read aloud will look like. You can choose a digital text you want to examine closely. Some of these narratives are a bit like these that we just looked at. They seem to enforce strict codes of rules or gender, insisting on a kind of boy-girl binary, like the Taylor Swift video. But there are others, like 
Ezra Furman's that offer more fluidity and bring, 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 bracing difference. Here is a list of videos. Choose one text to begin with. Analyze the narrative, thinking just like we did here about what you notice, especially about what kids are learning about gender. Then reread, watch it again, and be ready to support some theories about what gender norms or rules are being taught and learned here. Each of these videos are about two to three minutes long, and you can find them back in the lesson platform. You can decide how many you'll watch. I've listed some questions that may help guide your observations. What gender norms or behaviors do these characters display? And how do characters teach, learn, or enforce these codes? Take about 15 minutes to do this work well, jotting in your reading notebook as you watch the video, and then come back to this teaching video when you are done. Readers, what matters here is that gender roles are being taught implicitly all the time in groups, in situations, and in texts, and different identities and ways of being can be oppressed by these norms. If you are more alert to these interactions, you'll be able to think about them and decide to accept them or resist them as you choose. So before you go off to read today, will you think about what kind of thinking work you are most interested in pursuing? Do you want to go on with investigating the power of gender norms or how small details can suggest different kinds of power or code switching? Or maybe you're interested in the intersection of these. Take a moment, make a plan, and then off you go.